And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Preview of Jaden Daniels' first NFL football game. All right, let's get into it, Logan. Uh, this Tampa defense is super interesting. It is one heck of a challenge for Jaden Daniels uh, and for Cliff Kingsbury's return to the NFL. Um, I was watching a bunch of their pressures uh, this morning, and oh my God, they are coming from everywhere. Todd Bowles been around a long time. Uh, he's he's had a, got a lot of creativity, and the way they deploy their personnel is super interesting. When you watch them defensively, and, and you're if you put your Cliff Kingsbury bucket hat on and, and try to prepare Jaden Daniels for this game. What's your top line item that that you got to get him ready for? Yeah, I think it's just understanding what Todd, who Todd Bowles is, and again, like it's really interesting because you're coming off, you know, this uh, this preseason off season where you haven't really showed anything, and and one of the things about Todd Bowles, at least in reputation, I think it shows up on film too. To be fair, is that he does like to game plan his pressures, so he's gonna, you know, understand kind of how you call your slides, and what I mean by slide is like if we're in a four man front, like where's the center going? And then if the center's going left, like, and I bring a third rusher to the right, like does the back pick him up or do we have a tight end or is there a hot answer? And so he does a really good job, kind of like uh, Wink Martindale. Again, the, the volume's not quite as high as Wink Martindale, but they do a good job of scheming up pressures and bringing different patterns. So each week you're kind of like, what are we gonna see? Like, what's gonna happen? And I think that can be really, really challenging. And it's, so especially for a young player, cause it's not only the pattern of the blitz, but it's also who is not blitzing. So like there was a couple, I forget what game I was watching, maybe Minnesota was the first game last year. They're yeah. bringing like a third down pressure and it's like a like a pseudo cross dog where the two guys cross inside, but they're doing it to the weak side. So a little bit spicy, but nothing crazy. But the, um, the, the three, four linebackers are dropping into coverage. And most three, four linebackers just kind of drop into coverage. And it's like, they're just a, like a, like literally like a pylon at a spot and they're not <laughs> right. really covering anything. But yeah. obviously they coach those guys because they're trying to relate to receivers, which is very, very hard to do for those guys. But the fact that they're coaching that, I think, shows like what he's thinking about because they live in it. They live in these pressure packages. They want these guys dropping out to be super effective. And obviously they have really good blitzers like Levante David's a great blitzer. Antoine Winfield Jr. is a great blitzer. Obviously, Devin White was maybe the best blitzing linebacker in the NFL last year, or at least one of the most prolific. Not there anymore. But it's 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 part of who they are culturally and so on third down if it's third and i'd say six plus you're going to get something spicy and so if you're jane daniels like understand that understand who the opponent is understand if you can like where the rotation is as best as possible and try to understand where your best matchup is it's going to be harder like one of the things he did such a great job in the preseason of is identifying hey it's man coverage i like this man matchup let me hit it there or it's zone let me work the zone side but obviously in the Miami game when there was a little bit more in, he had, a, he had a mistake. And it's one mistake on 14, you know, whatever play, 25 plays, whatever he had in the preseason. So I'm not saying that like that's going to characterize this game. But what are the tools that Cliff is providing for him to dissect the coverage? What are the tools Cliff has installed to help the offense pick up some of these pressures and help Jane Daniels understand where the hot is? To me, that is the, the crux of the game is how do we stay out of crazy third long situations where we're going to get a ton of heat? And then when we're in those, how do I help this young player, if I'm Cliff, maximize these opportunities? Yeah, I think watching their pressures was so fascinating because they make it in, I won't say they make it impossible to identify the known rushers, but they move them around more than maybe any defense I've ever watched. And like what happens a lot of times for three, four base teams, which they are, is okay, now we're in nickel. Now we're just going to go four down. That's how the commanders used to play it um, yeah. back when they were in three, four back in the day with like Kerrigan and Preston Smith. Is like the second they went to nickel, they just became a four down front and it was like a four, two, five situation, right? What, what Tampa does more often than not is. They'll be like, okay, we're going to keep our standing outside linebackers and yeah. we're going to have two guys down and it'll be Vita Vea and, and whoever else and probably now Kalaja Kansi. Um, you know, those will be our two down guys and then we're going to keep standing linebackers. And oh, by the way, here's this, or like, you know, rush ends, right? Edges, but they're standing. And now we're going to also bring this safety down in the box and he might be coming or he might bail out or this linebacker might be coming, he might bail out. Or we might go three down and... You know, but the the guy who's lined up in the where a three technique should be, he's the guy who's standing. Yeah. And so it just is really, really challenging to identify who's coming from where they move it around. Sometimes they do that with like simulated looks again, where it's it's just four guys come in. Sometimes they do it with five or six. 
and it's fairly unpredictable. They'll they'll rush on first down. They'll rush on second. Like I, I literally sorted uh, their pressures on NFL Pro, and it was like I just scrolled down the list of plays to see what the down and distances were. Yeah. The amount of times they blitz on first and ten is crazy. They, they do blitz a lot. so they. I was gonna say so they blitz a lot on third down, but they do bring a lot of like run stopping pressures on first down. Like that showed up a lot, and I was a little surprised by that because it's like that doesn't doesn't you always think of blitzing on third down, but. You know what? I was talking to somebody, and they were like, the, "You know, the number one thing that he's the Todd Bowles is trying to do is stop the run." And so, you know, if you feel like you can't do it with your front, which is tough, it's tough to stop the runs in, in the NFL if you don't have movement in the front. Like, I'm going to bring pressure. So, I was a little surprised watching that last year because, again, you think about, you know, Vita Vea, like you know, Levante David, like those guys are, you know, beasts in the interior of the defense, but. They're four eyes, so like they're they're kind of usually they're kind of more like defensive like nose guard type bodies, but they line up over the tackles in a three down spacing. So you got someone over the center, you got someone over the tackles. Their four their four techniques are Kalijah Kansi, who's like 100, 280 pounds, and Logan Hall, who is a skinny guy. He's like two hundred skinny. He's like two hundred ninety pounds, but he's like six seven. And they are a little bit more dynamic athletically, and they kind of remind me of like Philadelphia when we used to play them in two thousand. I want to say like 11 to 14, they had like a, they played a three down front, but they had all these kind of smaller bodies and they would move them around a ton and it made it really hard to create combinations. And I think you see a little bit of that, not maybe not that influence, but that kind of stylistically where, hey, I'm Logan Hall on the backside of a run, the guard pulls, I'm going to shoot the gap, which a four I never does. It's almost like they're playing like a three technique. So I think from a personnel standpoint, that blitzing on first down, to me makes a little bit more sense because I want Kalaja Kansi on the move because he is he is rattlesnake quick, man. He is insane out there. So and then again, Logan Hall moves around pretty well. They're not maybe the best four eyes I've ever seen play, but they are more playmakers than you would expect. And you couple that with Vita Vey and his power on the interior, like it's a pretty formidable group. And if you think about it, like Vita Vey is a first round pick, Kalaja Kansi is a first round pick, Logan Hall is a first round pick the the off uh, rush end number nine for them is a first round pick like go down the list you know uh yaya diaby is a fourth round pick like they have a ton invested in their front feels very similar to kind of washington or washington when you know uh you know montez and chase and duran were all here because like they've got some juice up there and so that's really the thing that drives the defense in my opinion some people might say the safeties but i think it makes a lot of sense that he's bringing this type of pressure on first down um, because it, it lets those guys move around a little bit and be a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, it's going to be really interesting. And again, they identify. This is why they brought Tyler Tyler Biotis in, right? Is because they yeah. wanted that veteran center to try to match up uh, with a rookie quarterback who just doesn't have the file yet, uh, even if he's an excellent processor uh, of information. Um, and he's got override ability and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think as the year goes, we'll see Jaden take more and more command uh, over time. But there's a reason that they wanted, again, not just Biotis, but we talked about this with the roster construction. Like, did Michael Dieter necessarily have the greatest camp and and nail down his spot on the team with his play? No, but I think they wanted a veteran backup just in case something happens to Biotis uh, to, to know that they have another veteran in the building for Jaden Daniels. And so yeah. then the question becomes, if you're Cliff Kingsbury, how do you use some of that that speed, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, that aggressive, hey, we'll shoot the gap against you? I think, you know, can you get some some good looks with some RPO or some read option? That seems to like it should be on the table. Um, and then obviously you, you get into the actual pass concepts, Logan. And um, what do you what do you think is on the table, or is it is it more of a run heavy game plan? Is is this a big Brian Robinson day? Uh, I just took him uh, in in the Hoffman Show fantasy league, so I certainly hope every every Sunday is a big Brian Robinson day. Uh, but how do you think they, they kind of, what's the linchpin of the attack? I'll ask it that way. What's the linchpin of the attack this week for how you would attack a Todd Bowles defense with all these moving parts that we've discussed? Yeah. So I think the thing is like when you're bringing pressure, the way Todd Bowles does on first down and on third down, like his kind of, I think his base coverage structure is probably like a cover two or something like that, but he, they're never in it because they're blitzing so much. So the, what, what you see is you see like a three deep. So like traditional cover three, like corners are deep, safety is deep. And then you see <clears throat> some form of three underneath. And so when you think about it from a coverage standpoint, it's just simple math, right? If I have three underneath coverage players, like I can't cover as much grass. So there tends to be really huge throwing windows 
in the middle level of the defense. Obviously, you don't want to get too deep in there, but in the middle level of the defense, like on digs and hitches and kind of these spot routes that are a little bit deeper in there, there's a ton of grass. So if you feel like you can pick it up, pick up the pressure, I'd sling the rock a little bit, man. Like I would throw it a little bit. Now, how confident are you that you can do that? I have no idea. And so one of the things they've talked about or Dan's talked about from the jump is playing complimentary football. And people talk about like, what does that mean? And so let's, let's kind of peel that back a little bit. I, if I'm playing comp complimentary football and I'm an offense, I need to get first downs. I need to chew a little bit of clock, right? Because we're kind of relying on the defense to support us offensively. And I'm and offensively, we're supporting the defense. So if we go down and we go three and out real quick, we're not playing complimentary football because we're letting the defense out on the field for way too long. If I score too quickly in some cases, I'm not playing complimentary football. So I think you'll see them run the ball a lot, but I think you're going to see it from spread formations. Because you talked about how they still kind of play their 3-4 versus nickel. They do, but I think if you kind of play your cards right, you can get them in a four-down structure, which I just watching them, it doesn't feel like they want to be in that. And just from a number standpoint, it feels better for us. So let's say we've got five offensive linemen and B-Rob, and we're in a spread formation. If they lead six, six in the box, and we've got you know overhang players like these kind of slot receivers, and they have six in there, that means one of those dudes is open. So let's run a little RPO. Let's run a little zone read. Let's Let's put those guys in conflict on first and second down. And then if they're going to bring pressure on third down, let's make sure we got a rock solid plan to pick this sucker up, whether that's leaving a tight end in, bring it back in, like we can pick it up. And I think we've seen over the course of, you know, Ron Rivera's tenure here, when this team has played Todd Bowles defenses, like they've like Scott Turner, to his credit, had great plans for the, for the blitz and Taylor Heineke is able to dice them up in a playoff game and in their regular season game when they were throwing for touchdowns and stuff. So I think if you have a plan, that's how it's going to work. But I do think you need to run the football again to possess the ball a little bit, slow the game down, take some pressure off of Jaden Daniels. And so for those big moments where it's like, hey, third and five, we got to have it. He feels comfortable and confident to make that play. Yeah. One skill that, you know, we, is never going to show up on a, a quarterback stat line but is super duper important on a very fundamental baseline level is do you properly target your runs, right? And obviously Biotish might be the guy who's doing that, but it's specifically against a team that blitzes a lot. Are you running into the blitz or are you running away from the blitz? Yeah. Because if you run away from the blitz, well, they're taking multiple defenders out of the play because they're trying to, you know, the, the way they're going to run is they're going to run at the quarterback and basically take themselves out of where the running back is headed. Uh, if you run into the blitz, well, then you are obviously got multiple uh, extra defenders that you're not accounting for in the blocking structure. And so, long story so, short, wait, wait, Logan. One second. There's, like, there's yeah. like a nerdy, this is really nerdy, so sorry, this might be too nerdy for this podcast. But when you there's are... There's no, no such thing as too nerdy for this podcast. So when you're blitzing on first and second down, you're going to create movement, right? So like if I'm blitzing to the offensive right, the defensive line, hypothetically, should stunt to the left because we need to now account for the gaps that we're adding to the front side of this run. So some people say, oh, I want to run away from the pressure. But oftentimes it's harder to run that way because the line is stunting that way. So yeah. what they like to do usually is say, hey, well, I'm going to attack the blitz and catch them out of the stunt, kick out the blitzer, hypothetically. Let's just say they're bringing like a Sam, like just one and they're stunting everybody else. I can kick that guy out and we can catch them in the stunt and we can get up to the second level easier. So I think that's definitely a, a, an interesting kind of, if you want some nerdy football stuff to watch is like, yeah. what do they do with the pressure? Are they running at it? Are they running away from it? Are they checking out of stuff? Do they want to throw the ball? Like that's, the layers that I think we're going to be seeing from Cliff and this offensive staff. It's the chess game, right? And, yeah. and well, my point was that like it's super important for Jaden to be able to correctly and be honest to correctly identify who's coming, and yeah. then understand is are is Tampa a team that is going to do what you just said? Is is it or are they not actually that good at that? Or do they? Yeah, whether it's right. plan wise or execution wise, like where is what where should you be sending the run? which is often, I don't know how this offense works specifically. Um, I don't know if you know how this offense works specifically, how much flexibility they have to make sure that the you know we can just flip the run right, left, uh, depending on what we see at the line of scrimmage. I know in Kyle's offense, uh, we've talked about that quite a bit, like how you guys would go to the line of scrimmage with two runs, and then if both of them kind of sucked based off the look, it's like, ah, yeah. screw it, let's just let's have a third play in there. Just that's a pass. your brain. Yeah, yeah like, let's, uh, let's have a, you know, a, a Charles Dickens novel of a play <laughs> call. Uh, but for Cliff, like, is that something that's in and the ability to try to get in the right run, uh, you know, if that's a, a way that they're going to counter the blitz? 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, just watching, I mean, when you watch practice, I know they're they're kind of in this, like, hurry up, no huddle, a big percentage of the time, but it, se- it just seems when you watch, like, training camp practice, uh, even the open practices, that they do have a lot of flexibility at the line. Now, I don't know what that flexibility looked like. It seems very unlikely to me that they, have, they would have two plays called. It seems like what they would do, and this is pure speculation, just based on, like, their language and how they do it at the line of scrimmage, is it seems like they're coaching to a look. So what I mean by that is like they'll install a play, for example. Let's say it's, I don't know, at a twenty at a twenty one personnel with B Rob and Austin in the backfield. Like if we get a six man pressure, a five man pressure on first down, I want you to check to this run or this screen. And we're not we're not like we're not calling it, but like when the, when we get up there and you see it. Like this is the home run look, so let's just check to the play. I don't need to call it right. every time because it's I want you to it's what Jaden did in the preseason when he wasn't supposed to because right. you know that wasn't technically like it was the right thing. It was just like, hey man, we're not doing that in the preseason. But yeah. he saw the look and, and he went for it and he hits Diami for forty yards up the sideline. Or it's like I think another great example is the Sam Hartman uh, in the third quarter of that same game when they get zero and they run speed option. Like that's a great call. I know they did not have speed option. It wasn't like stick and speed option no it was like oh this is zero i can call speed option if i want you know what i'm saying like it's not yeah. like it's not structured the same way kyle's or it's like here's five plays that we're all calling in the huddle you got to remember them and we're going to check to them it's like no 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 it's like if we get the home run if we get the look we're looking for check to this and we're going to run it so i think that's kind of where i would say that the, to your point the the, the Jaden daniels like awareness of of what is happening is going to be super important. And I think that could be challenging this week because we haven't seen any of the, those looks on film. Because like we just talked about, there are certain core tenets that Todd Bowles is going to abide by. But I do think that um, you're going to see some novel stuff from him also. And so like, how do you put those home run looks in when you don't know exactly what he's going to be doing, especially week one? Like defensive coordinators change. They add wrinkles. They look, they're different coming out of the offseason. So... I think that that to me is another really compelling thing too for, for um, uh, Joe Wood Jr. and Jane Daniels and Cliff Kingsbury. It's like there's this novelty of what's going to be seen. Like you could go back and watch all the film in the world, but you don't know how he's going to play this offense. Because I tried to go back and I was like, when was the last time this team played? And I, I like you know I couldn't figure it out because you're like, was Todd Bowles there? Actually, Bruce Arians was the coach. Like you know what I'm saying? So right. it gets a little bit dicey, but. I, I do think that to me is going to be really interesting is how they get into those, those like uh, those check looks, if you will. Yeah. Counterpoint way to simplify a defense tempo. And that tempo. is something that this team uses. So I, I think that's going to be an interesting part of the chess match as well is how does the tempo, you know, because that is one thing we talk about like the principles of a, of a coordinator, right? There's certain stuff that Todd Bowles is going to change. I doubt that how Todd Bowles reacts, if he has certain things he's been doing for a decade to three by one or, you know, to tempo, like we're defaulting to this call, like tempo is a great equalizer to simplify a defense. And so I do wonder how much Cliff is going to rely on that because again, with the complimentary football element, tempo can run counter to that. You go yeah. fast and it doesn't work. Well, now you've gone three and out quickly and that's Dan Quinn is going to be like, all right, we probably should huddle up and slow things down a little <laughs> bit. So I like that is the game management aspect is fascinating. And this, you know, this is why I think we've captured in this pod maybe more than anyone we've ever have like the chess match and like if this then that well okay if that then this yeah. that happens literally every single week in the NFL. Yeah and again you try to prep your way through it and say like oh this is kind of like but ultimately you don't know. So I think um you know obviously it's going to be harder for Joe Witt Jr. this week I think because it's a totally new offensive staff. And they're going to try and abide by the same offensive system as they did last year at least that's what I've been reading in Tampa Bay. But it's going to be new, you know, and then Jaden Daniels, it's going to be new. And like, what does Todd Bowles do? Like, maybe it's like, hey, we're not going to blitz you at all. And we've put all this, all of these blitz beating concepts in. And so then our offense gets really tight or maybe the tempo, maybe they check to something in tempo that we're not expecting. And then our tempo stuff doesn't look good. Like there's teams that tell, oh, you're going to go tempo. Let's go zero. Good luck getting the ball out. You know what I'm saying? Like. And then it's like, oh, well, do we feel comfortable about our tempo stuff now or, or, or what? So right. I, I just think like that, it, that's why this game to me is so fun. That's why the first game is always fun. It's always a little bit of a crapshoot. Like, are we in the right stuff? But um, I, that's why I'm so excited to watch, watch this football game. For sure. <laughs>